Yo, what's going on, yo? I'm JB Hoops, and today I'm doing my mock draft 4.0. So I'm gonna do a full two round mock draft, picks one through 60 with all the updated trades. I'm recording this just a few hours after the Porzingis trade to the Celtics finally got done. So we're less than 24 hours out from the draft. Now this mock is just gonna be what I would do if I was picking. So it's all my opinion and I'm not taking it too seriously. And not a ton of thought is going into all the picks, especially towards the second round. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. I'll have some post-draft content coming soon, some summer league stuff maybe, along with other NBA related content. But anyway, let's just get right into it. With the number one pick in the 2023 NBA draft, I have the Spurs selecting Victor Wembanyama. Obviously not much needs to be said, so we're just going to go straight to two with the Hornets and I have them taking Scoot Henderson. It looks like they're probably going to go with Brandon Miller, but I would 100% go with Scoot. I just think he's tiers above as a prospect. I actually think he fits better with LaMelo than Brandon Miller does, as he pressures the rim and allows Melo to play to his strengths. Now with the third pick, the Blazers are up. I think they will trade this pick, but as of right now, they haven't, but I have them going with Amen Thompson. Amen's an all-time great athlete and the best playmaker in the draft, so I think it's a no-brainer pick for me, especially if they were to rebuild, but I think that pick gets traded anyway. But at four, the Rockets are up, and I have them going with Cam Whitmore. This will be an interesting one if a man is off the board, and I think they'll probably look into trading back, but for now, I have them going with Cam Whitmore. Now at five, the Pistons snag Brandon Miller. I'm not super high on him, but the talent is undeniable. And now at six, I have the Magic going with Asar Thompson. The Magic have a ton of talent, and I think Asar fits right in. He plays lockdown defense, can facilitate and handle, so I have the Magic taking him at six. Now the paces are on the clock, I think Jarris Walker is a pretty obvious selection here, not much needs to be said. I think there's a bit of a drop off after the top 7, Anthony Black has been heavily rumoured to go at 8, but I do think he'd be better suited to playing next to legit creators, and with all the trades the Wizards just don't have that, so I have them going with Case and Wallace. Now at 9, this is probably where Anthony Black realistically goes, but I'd probably take Keontae George, I just love his shooting and shot making and think he has primary upside. And then at 10, Taylor Hendricks is another obvious fit. 11, the Magic are on the clock with their second lotto pick, and I've been taking Grady Dick, so that's another seamless fit. At 12, the Thunder could really go in a lot of directions. There's a lot of great prospects in this range. Bilal Koulibaly's been heavily rumored, so is Kobe Bufkin, even Derek Lively. But I have them going with Gregory Jackson II. I love Gigi's upside. I think he can be a legit secondary or tertiary creator. And the Thunder are still in a position to develop a talent like Gigi and take a swing on a really high upside guy. Now back at 13, I think this is another spot Anthony Black could probably go if he falls. I also would like Kobe Bufkin or Nick Smith Jr. here, but I have them going with, in my opinion, the second best scorer in the draft, as well as a top three shooter, which is Bryce Sensabar. He's just a bucket and I can't let him fall much further. Now at 14, the Pelicans could also go in a lot of different directions. I really like Derek Whitehead for him, but I'm going with his Duke teammate, Derek Lively the second. Derek Lively's almost a perfect front court partner for Zion. He's an elite defensive prospect and has shown he can shoot it in the past. So I have them taking Lively at 14. Now at 15, I think Anthony Black has fallen far enough, so I have the Hawks taking him. At 16, the Jazz already took Keontae George, so I have them going with Bilal Koulibaly here. I think Bilal Koulibaly has great upside, and the Jazz could give him the time and reps he needs. The Lakers are up at 17, they're probably going to look to move this pick as well. But I think if Kobe Bufkin is still available, he would be a great pickup, replacing D'Angelo Russell, and probably being a better defender at this point. And now at 18, I think the Heat could probably go with a guard or a power forward to pair with Bam. I think Leonard Miller is probably one of the best prospects available at this point, and I think his fit alongside Jimmy and Bam is perfect, and the Heat could really get a lot out of him, so I've been taking him at 18. The Warriors are another team I think might trade their pick, but for now, I have them taking someone who could potentially replace Poole, which is Nick Smith Jr. And I think he'd fit nicely in their offense. Now at 20, if the Rockets did end up missing out on the men, I think they'd go after a point guard here. So you have JHS, and then you've got guys like Pods. I think Pods is probably the better prospect for me, and he would really fit in nicely with the Houston core. So I have them taking him at 20. Now the Nets are on the clock with back-to-back -back picks, so I think they just take the best prospects available, which in my opinion are Dariq Whitehead and then Jet Howard, and I think that would be a great outcome if they were to stay at 21 and 22, but I think they'll definitely look to trade up. At 23, the Blazers are up. They've already taken a men. They've got Sharp, Simons if he sticks around, Dame as well, 
Now, I hope they move Dame. And if they are going with the men, I would really like a big who can defend. And I think that's Noah Clowney. Even if they're not, Noah Clowney's a great fit. So I have the Blazers taking Noah Clowney at 23. Now the Kings are up at 24. They could go in a lot of different directions. I think they really need a wing. So I would be looking at guys that can defend. Max Lewis probably isn't that guy, but he is probably one of the best prospects available at this point. Chris Murray would be cool, but I think he's just too redundant next to Keegan. And overall, just nowhere near the prospect. Colby Jones is another cool one, but I kind of want some more athleticism in there. Omax Prosper makes sense, but I have them taking Jordan Walsh, which who's all the way down here at 47. So I have them taking him at 24. So at 25, this is the Celtics pick. JHS makes sense since they just lost Smart. So I have the Celtics going with JHS. Now at 26, this is the Pacers pick. They traded the next two. They took Jarris Walker. I think going with the Buddy Hield replacement makes sense. So I have them taking Jordan Hawkins. 27, the Hornets are up. I think Colby Jones is another obvious one here if he's there. 28, I think Chris Murray would be a cool addition to the Jazz core. Now, this is the Nuggets pick, and I think if Max Lewis is still there, that's a steal. So, I have them taking him at 29. At 30, the Clippers are on the clock, and I've been going with a point guard in Marcus Sasser. He's going to be a real contributor very quickly. Now, at 31, the Pistons could probably go in a variety of ways. I'd probably like a backup point guard for them or someone in the forward or wing spots. City Sissoko could be a guy they look at or Omax Prosper. I probably prefer Sissoko at this point, but he is very raw. But anyway, I have them going with City Sissoko at 31. At 32, the Nuggets are back on the clock. I have them going with the Jokic backup in James Najee. Spurs are back up. There's a Frenchman here available. Victor probably wants to make that happen, but I would go with the better prospect, which in my opinion is Amari Bailey. At 34, the Hornets are definitely going to trade some of these picks. They're definitely not making five picks, but for now, I have them taking Omax Prosper. 35, so this is a Wizards pick. They already took Case and Wallace. I guess they go for another high upside guy here, and that could be a Rayon Repair. 36 for the Magic, I'd probably be looking at centers and point guards if they were to get Asar Thompson and Grady Dick. Turk is probably one of the best shot creators in the class, best deep range shooters, and I think that makes sense given the Magic's backcourt shooting issues. At 37, this is still the Nuggets pick. I think Jaime Hawkins Jr. makes sense here. Great team defender, high IQ player, he fits alongside Jokic for sure. 38, the Kings are back on the clock. I think this is an obvious pick for me personally. I would go with Trace Jackson Davis, an athletic defensive backup center who can really make things happen. With their fourth pick, the Hornets, I, I don't know, I'd probably just go with another high upside defender guy like Julian Phillips. Now this one is the Pacers pick. So I had the Pacers taking Jarris Walker and Jordan Hawkins. So I'm really not sure who I'd go with here, but I'm just gonna take Andre Jackson Jr. for now. 41, the Hornets are up again. This is definitely, they're not making five selections, so this is just kind of a throw-in. We'll take Ben Shepard here. He's a guy who could definitely go in the first round. So at 42, I'm just going to have the Wizards taking Julian Strawther. Now the Blazers already have a men, Thompson and Noah Clowney. That's all their athleticism and defense. So I have them going with some shooting and physicality in Kobe Brown. He's very versatile, could definitely be a first round guy. Now at 44, I really like the idea of Victor Wembanyama and Amoni Bates. Fair few really good defenders and Amoni Bates would fit in really perfectly just getting his buckets. So I like that pick for them at 44. 45, I'm pretty sure this is the Grizzlies pick. So I would probably go for a wing player here who can defend. Now he is probably more of a four than a wing, but I've been taking Tamani Kamara out of Dayton. At 46, the Hawks are up. They took Anthony Black. I think they go with another probably center or power forward. I think Muhammad Gay is a great pickup here. Got a lot of upside, can pass, defend. Needs to get stronger for sure, but I like that pickup anyway. Now at 47, I don't know what the Lakers would probably do. So I'd probably just go maybe someone who can contribute straight away, as well as someone who can defend at a high level. And I think that could be Jalen Slauson out of Furman. Back up to the top at 48 with the Clippers pick. They took Marcus Sasser at 30. There's definitely still a lot of options, but I have them going with Ricky Council the fourth. The Cavs are up at 49. They need a wing, a point guard, or a center. I like Khalifa Diop they got last year. So I'd look at wings here. Yeah, so I'm probably going to go with Seth Lundy here. Now at 50, the Thunder are up. 
They could probably go with Drew Timmy here to make Chet happy, as well as give him another big body center. They probably don't have a lot of roster space, but for someone that fits their play style, I would go with Tosan Awoma. 51, the Nets are back on the clock. Again, they probably go with a point guard to run their stuff, so I would take Mike Miles Jr. 52, the Suns are up. They need someone who can contribute straight away. At 52, I have the Suns going with Tristan Vucevic. Now at 53, the Wolves are up. I'm really not sure which way they go here but I do like Amari more off their bench. The Kings are up at 54. I think they'll probably just go with a stash guy here. I really like Vincent Valerio Bodon. So he's here at 78 and I've been taking him at 54. Back up top, we got the Pacers again. So this will be their third pick after taking Jordan Hawkins and Jarris Walker, the other two are Nuggets picks. And I think taking Jalen Wilson makes sense. The Grizzlies already have a lot of nice young pieces. So they probably look to get a stash guy here. Nikos Rogkovopoulos is probably that guy. Now, the next two are forfeited picks, so we'll just pick someone who isn't going to be in the draft. Uh, that is Arthur Kaluma, and then the sixes, Bobby Clintman. 59, the Wizards are back on the clock. I think Jalen Clark is a good guy here. And with the last pick in the draft, I have the Bucks going with Justin Mutz. All right, so that wraps it up. My full two-round mock draft on the day of the draft. I think this is going to be a really interesting draft with a lot of trades, but this is how I would pick as of right now. I, I appreciate if you watch the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. I'll probably have a video out the day after the draft grading it all and talking about my favorite picks and steals. I'll continue the videos after the draft, so make sure to stay tuned. Anyway, I appreciate all the support this cycle. It really means a lot. And anyway, that's all I got. JB Hoops, out.